Thank you for participating in the Humane Summit, a virtual speaker series brought to you by the Humane Education Coalition. This session is sponsored by the Griffin Press and the Humane Society of the United States. We are grateful for your attendance today for the Progressive Animal Welfare Society speaker session, Kids Who Care, using multiple exposure programming to make a measurable impact, presented by Katie Amrine, AJ Klebnik, and Nico Shaw. Katie is the Education Coordinator, AJ is Education Programs Manager, and Nico is Educator at PAUSE. They have a combined total of nearly 30 years of experience in education, with focuses in animal protection and environmental education. At this time, I will pass things over to our speakers. Hello and welcome to Kids Who Care, using multiple exposure programming to make a measurable impact. My name is Katie Amrine, and I am the Education Coordinator at PAWS. And my name is AJ Klebnik. I am the Education Programs Manager at PAWS. Um, and as you'll see on there, my animal alter ego is a golden retriever because I like everybody. And my name is Nico Shaw. I am an educator at PAWS, and I am currently flicker training my cat to jump through hoops. So here at Paws, our mission is to be a champion for animals, rehabilitating injured and orphaned wildlife, and sheltering and adopting homeless cats and dogs, as well as educating people to make a better world for animals and people. Now, we are probably not the Paws near you, unless you are in or near Seattle. Uh, Paws is located in Linwood, and there are a lot of other organizations called Paws, but we are the only ones here in the Linwood area. And in order to meet our mission, we have, first of all, our Wildlife Rehabilitation and Research Center, where we are taking care of more than 4,500 sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife every single year, and that is over 260 species of animals. We take care of both urban animals, urban wildlife, as well as some larger species, so everything from squirrels and rabbits to black bears. We are actually the only facility in the Washington and Oregon Oregon area that is licensed to care for black bears. So the services that we provide are wildlife rehabilitation and release. We also do veterinary externships as well as conservation research. For example, we work with western pond turtles and studying the ulcerative cell disease that is really affecting their populations negatively. We also have our Paws Companion Animal Services, and this is where we are caring for more than 4,000 dogs and cats every single year. 70% of our cats and dogs that we care for are transferred from high coast shelters around the country, especially states like California. And here at the Companion Animal Shelter, we provide adoption services as well as lost and found services. We also do low cost spay and neuter for low income communities, and we have veterinary externships here as well. Now we also have our PAWS education programs and that's what we're mainly going to be talking about today. In our education we reach over 8,000 children and adults every single year and that is through classroom education with our Kids Who Care program which is going to be our model program today as well as on-site programs like scout programs for Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts as well as teen and preteen programs and homeschool programs. We also do adult education as well. Uh, so Kids Who Care is a classroom-based program for fourth graders, and this is where we are actually going to the classroom for one session per week for uh, six total weeks. And in this program, we are covering several different things. We start with an introduction where we're hoping to have them understand animals, and then we go on to understanding our pets, um, pet safety and responsible pet care, and then responsibility towards our pets talking about spay and neuter animal shelters and animal abuse. And then we move on to talking about understanding wildlife and we talk about habitats and adaptations. And then we talk about responsibility toward wildlife with issues facing wildlife, ways to help. And then finally bringing it all together and talking about humane living. Now, we are going to be using our Kids Who Care program as a bit of a model to demonstrate what the multiple exposure method looks like in practice. So looking at the outline of these lesson topics, um, they, 
there are kind of multiple units within it. We have a pet unit, we have a wildlife unit, but the different concepts covered really all build upon each other. And so in this workshop today, we're going to be exploring what the multiple exposure method is, how we use it in our kids' care program, and then what you all can do at your own sites and facilities to implement a similar, a similar method. So the multiple exposure method occurs when a learner hears or experiences the same information multiple times or in a different way. So it's not enough just to have a program in which you are reaching the same group of people 10 times. If all of those 10 experiences are isolated experiences, that's really not what the multiple exposure method is. So this is the idea that you are building knowledge upon knowledge, um, the kind of the snowballing effect in that photo. So you have, start with a small snowball, that little core base of knowledge. As it rolls down a hill, you're building more and more knowledge on it. It's getting bigger, it's getting stronger. And that's what the multiple exposure method is. There is a great deal of research that shows the long-term success of exposing students to, um, to information in a lot of different ways and over a longer time period. And the, the proven result of how that causes retention of knowledge. And so in our field in humane education, it's important for us to think about if we want to affect change, how can we do it most effectively? And the multiple exposure method is proven to be one of the best ways to do that. So, Let's say you start with your topic. We're gonna to kind of break down what this process actually looks like to develop a program. Maybe you already have a single visit program and you want it, you want to do more with it, you want to be more impactful. So let's say you start with a topic. And we're gonna use one example that we use here at Pause, um, and that is safe confinement plans for cats. So this is something we care a lot about. We work both with wildlife and with companion animals, so we see both sides of the issue. So this is our topic. Now, in humane education, what we are after is we're after behavior change. We want people to change their behavior, to make a difference in the world. And the only way we get people to change their behavior is if they change their attitude or if they have a specific attitude that causes them to want to act in a certain way. So using this model that we have, or this example of a safe confinement plan for a cat, the behavior change that we are hoping for is we want cat guardians to implement a safe confinement plan, but in order for them to actually take that step, they need to have a certain attitude. We want them to want their cat to live a happy, safe life and not hurt or kill wildlife. So in order to get to that behavior change, that's the attitude that we are looking for. Now, in some programs, you know, you might try to do this in just one exposure. So one, one hour lesson, you're kind of breaking down all the details, but research tells us that that really does not make much of a difference. So we're gonna kind of break down how you would build the knowledge to ultimately get people to this attitude change and behavior change. And you do that with kind of different, different levels of understanding, different levels of cognition. So the first level of cognition is the perceptual level. And this is kind of the, that basic, this is identification, it's naming, it's really what is it. The next level of cognition is the conceptual level. This is a little bit more advanced. It's where people are starting to make connections and it's kind of getting at that idea of how does it work? People are grappling with these different, um, yeah, interconnections between the topic that they're exploring. And then the third level of cognition is the connecting level. And this is really, this is the most advanced level. This is where people are making direct connections to their own life, to their own experiences, and that gets at why does it matter. Now, these levels of cognition are modeled after Sue Allen's work. So if you want to learn more about these, these levels, I highly recommend checking out um, some of the work that she has done in informal education. So ultimately, you go through these different levels of cognition. Once you reach connecting, that is where you then get the attitude change. And from there, hopefully that results in behavior change. So again, this is kind of a, it's a little bit of a process. It's not something that you can just have done overnight or even in a one hour lesson. As you saw, Kids Who Care is a six lesson program. So we're gonna use Kids Who Care um, and kind of dive into the topics that we cover in the perceptual, conceptual, and connecting levels. So looking at the topics that are connected to the perceptual level, that is the idea that cats are pets. So if we want kids to walk away and talk to their families about implementing a safe confinement plan for their cats, they need to know what a cat is and that cats are pets. Next, we need to explore some of these connections. 
so the interconnections and how some cats live indoors, some cats live outdoors, cats hunt wildlife, they are beginning to understand kind of the role that cats play and exactly how it works. And then the connecting level. This is where they're starting again to make connections to their own life, to their own experiences. So they're looking at how outdoor dangers can affect cats. They're looking at how cats and wildlife are safe when cats have a safe confinement plan. And then ultimately, why does it matter? Well, let's develop a safe confinement plan for our cats. So these are topics. Now, when, when developing programs that are, and you're using the multiple exposure method, it's really important to not develop the activities. This is, this is also known as backwards lesson planning, where you start with your end goal. And if your end goal is that behavior change, you need to break down all of the steps to get there. So we've kind of broken down these steps, and now we are gonna give you a few examples of activities, um, just to try to you know, help you in this process. So with that perceptual level, some activity ideas that we do here in our programs, um, we do an exploration of basic needs of all animals and connect that to how humans have the same basic needs. And we explore how pets, specifically cats, they are reliant on people for those basic needs. We do a stand up, sit down activity where kids will stand up if they have a cat. Stand up if you know someone that has a cat. So again, just trying to build this foundation because as much as we might assume that, well, you know, most kids know that cats are pets, not necessarily, and they might have differing levels of understanding of that because there's a lot of complex notions associated with what a pet is. Um, so just kind of trying to build a little bit more of that foundation. After that, some conceptual activities that we use in our programs. So we do a cat safety activity where the kids learn about some ways that people keep dogs safe, for instance, with yards and taking them out on walks. And they come up with some ways that we can keep cats safe too. Um, and we discuss how cats live indoors and cats live outdoors. So really examine like how to be safe around cats, what to do if you see a cat that is outside on their own. Um, we also play a game called Happy Cat, Sad Cat in which kids are cats and it's a board game and as they kind of move along this board game they have different events happen to them that either make them happy or make them sad and they start to notice trends where the sad events are all happening outside and the happy events are all happening inside so kind of creating that relationship there and then we also do an activity with wildlife hazards where the kids, um, they examine some different items that can be dangerous to wildlife, one of which is a cat. And they discuss, you know, they share stories about their own pets that might have attacked wildlife. And they hear stories about wildlife that we've had at paws that have been attacked by cats. So again, just kind of laying that groundwork, beginning to understand that conceptual idea that cats do hunt wildlife. And then a few activity ideas for connecting. So we do a much more in-depth kind of tied into the wildlife hazards activity where we explore the idea of conservation and what kids can do to help wildlife and all of these different dangers that wildlife are facing. What are some actions that kids can take? And that's where they start thinking about, well, let's keep our cats inside and away from wildlife. Um, and then that also ties in to another activity that we do where the kids design some something that can help keep cats and wildlife safe. And ultimately, they often end up designing their own version of a catio. Um, if you're not familiar with a catio, they're enclosed cat patios, or like a little cat playground outside. But they, they often end up designing their own version of a catio, even if they've never heard of one before, but they are reaching that, that on their own. We're kind of laying this groundwork, we're going through those levels of cognition. Ultimately, they're developing these own ideas and these own like goals for themselves and for their own cats. So, so the kind of another framework for how, how you can think of multiple exposures is also known as the spiraling effect. So you start at your audience's pre-existing knowledge and you ensure that you understand where they are. So you're gonna revisit what they already know. And then as you build this up, you go through those different levels of cognition. So what is it? What are we talking about here? And then we revisit those previous concepts. And then our next level of cognition, how does it work? And then we continue to revisit what we already learned. And then ultimately, why does it matter? And as this spiral gets bigger, they are building more and more knowledge. It is becoming much more deeply ingrained in their understanding of the world. 
And ultimately, by taking the time to go through all of these different layers and through all of these different exposures to a certain concept or topic, you can ultimately unlock the attitude and behavior changes. So this is really all of our end goal in humane education, and this is definitely one of the best ways to do that. All right, so you've developed this great multiple exposure plan, and I want to share a little bit with, uh, with you what we've seen as results, because results are really important and they're a really important part of humane education. So with our Kids Who Care program, we do a pre-survey and a post-survey for all of the students who go through that program to see how attitudes change both before and after they've been through the program. And on the screen, you can see some of the results from our 2017-2018 school year. There's, it might be a little bit difficult to see the categories at the bottom, but you can see the light colors are the attitudes pre-survey and the dark colors are attitudes post-survey. Uh, I want to highlight just a couple of just a couple of, we are at an animal shelter, so if you can't hear, um, we are working animal shelter, so. Um, but definitely, the outdoors can be dangerous for cats. That is a concept that we're trying to get across. Also, the other circled one is cats are a danger to wildlife. And so uh, that is a second concept that our activities were geared towards. And what we're measuring here is important to note is attitude change. We don't measure behavior change, but hope that this attitude change that we see in just six weeks will ultimately lead to behavior change. Uh, you can see some big increases in our goal attitudes, agreeing with the outdoors can be dangerous for cats and that cats are a danger to wildlife once they've completed the program. These, uh, what you're seeing on the screen now is all sorts of qualitative examples as well. So we measure uh, yes or no questions, but we also will have the kids tell us what they've learned. And these all relate in some way to those concepts of developing safe confinement plans for your cats. So you should buy a catio for a cat, don't let it outside, uh, animals basic needs. Again, remember that was an activity we talked about as part of our plan they're not met, they might die, get sick, or be unhealthy. Animals deserve the same lives as us, AKA a good life. Uh, that is a verbatim quote from a child. Uh, so they are definitely starting to connect to these concepts uh, that we're teaching during the program, and we can see that at the end. All of the photos on this slide that you see are children who, after the Kids Who Care program, have chosen to take action through PAWS to help animals on their own, whether it is baking, um, making dog treats to sell at a local park, holding a donation drive for PAWS that they worked with us on. So that, that is, and those are some examples of the behavior change uh, from the program as a whole that you can see uh, with those specific examples of children from our Kids Who Care program. So multiple exposure programs can be very effective. Research shows it, our results confirm that. What could that look like at your facility? Uh, that definitely could look like a program similar to Kids Who Care. Other facilities do have similar programs. Uh, going to a classroom for multiple times and revisiting those concepts over time. Teens coming to your facility for three Saturdays. Preschoolers coming regularly once a month with their families over the summer. A three-day workshop that you have for adults. All of these are different examples of multiple exposure programs and maybe one works better for your program than another. Why does this all matter um, when it comes down to it? As an organization, achieving support, achieving funding, uh, humane education is, uh, does need those things to be able to achieve that attitude and behavior change. In order to be able to achieve behavior changes, we need to have support from teachers and financial support. And a multiple exposure program backed in research can absolutely do that. So although as educators, what we might care about most is the attitude and behavior change, uh, the results that we get, we are able to garner teacher support with those results as well. We do share those results with each teacher in each classroom that we visit. And we are, 
able to show them exactly what attitude changes occurred in their students. Teachers really appreciate that and uh, like to be able to see that, yes, this program that we had is effective, it is working, and I can see the changes right there. When you're working with grantors and when you're working with uh, corporate sponsors, being able to see those attitude changes for them is also very important and helps us to continue to secure funding year after year for the program. Um, with those two things, uh, what I would like to mention is that we no longer have to advertise our Kids Who Care program. Uh, teachers love it so much that it's just word of mouth when we get new schools. It's because a teacher has told another teacher about it. So we haven't advertised for that program for about two years and we are completely full and have been the last two years. Uh, with our grants and sponsorships, being able to show the results of a multiple exposure program uh, has allowed us to, this year, secure over $20,000 of grants and sponsorships to continue this program, which is really, really exciting for us. That means that we can offer this program to uh, any, pretty much any school that can afford to pay for it, any of our high need but low income school areas, we can offer that program to them free of charge, regardless of their ability to pay which makes, uh, is really part of our goal as an organization. So hopefully after all of this, you've gotten some really good ideas that you can use to implement a multiple exposure program with the education that you do at your organization. And uh, you'll be able to uh, be a champion of the multiple exposure program. If you have a, any questions for us, if you would like to see a blank outline of that uh, flow chart that Katie showed you. We do have those available. Just uh, contact us at education at pause.org and we would be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you so much for joining us today. This concludes our speaker session. Thank you so much for joining us. You can learn more here or by clicking the resource links in the summit. We hope you've enjoyed this speaker session and that you'll join us for another one soon. Please consider making a donation to the Humane Education Coalition to help us continue providing programs and events like the Humane Summit. We rely on your support to help create a more compassionate, just, and sustainable future through education. Visit hecoalition.org give to contribute today. Thanks again.